hey, I was doing a program that was literally hunting the most wanted terrorists. And so, yeah. So that wound up, I wound up in the Al-Qaeda hit list from that. Um, so, yeah, I do take some issue with the, the typical Washington game of how they play. Because, look, I started Blackwater as a way to stay connected to the SEAL teams and to try to serve my country. We answered the call when the USG called again and again and again from thousands of people. We lost 43 of our men doing that mission. Multiple of our aircraft shot down. Um, and in, in 43 KIA and hundreds seriously wounded, just like active duty in the military, right? People that pay serious costs for a politician's decision to send them into harm's way. And I ended up behind where I was financially having sold the business because it got smashed in valuation and in, um, and, and so, so what, right? Because men died, men were incarcerated, I think un- unnecessarily and unjustly as because of, because of a, I would say a very broken Washington political process. When did you sell the company? 2010. <clears throat> After you sold the company, at what point did you move to Abu Dhabi? Uh, I'd moved about the same time we sold it. Why did you move? Uh, at that time, Somali piracy was raging off the coast of Somalia. They were taking 80 to 90 ships per year, taking 1 million to 10 million in ransom per vessel. And the UAE leadership wanted to do something about it, right? That's a seafaring nation. They depend on trade, Dubai port, and, and exporting their crude. And they wanted to do something in a, in a chance meeting, um, explained what, um, what should happen. And uh, they said, yalla, let's so, go. And so they didn't want me directly involved with it. They just said, kind of lay out the, uh, the, um, the how and why to do this. And the Portland Marine Police Force was built, and that unit went active by early 2012. And you don't hear much about Somali piracy after that. No, you don't. It's funny how that works. Yeah. But it wasn't. Look, the the, the typical bureaucratic approach was ships chasing pirates all over the Indian Ocean. That's dumb, right? If you have a if you have a wasp problem in your yard. You find the nest and you deal with the nest. It doesn't take a genius to figure out where the pirates are in Somalia. If you fly along the coast, right, you don't need some KH-11 satellite imagery. You can fly along the coast in a King Air and say, oh, there's six ships anchored down there off this fishing village with no port. Must be pirates, right? And you go after the pirate logistics because when they'd go, they'd go to sea and they'd capture a vessel... They'd have to drive it back to the coast, and they'd have to put guards on that boat, and they'd have to sit on it for six months to a year waiting for the ransom to get paid. Another book that I read called The Pirate Coast, which, lay, which laid out the uh, how the U.S. dealt with the Barbary pirates in Libya in 1804-1805. Same kind of program. <laughs> a, former American, or, I mean, a former American Army officer, William Eaton, eight Marines, 90 contracted um, mercenaries, French, Greek, and Italian, right? The Marine Corps hymn goes from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. There was eight Marines on that deal and 90 contracted mercenaries. And that's what ended piracy for the United States in Libya. In this case, um, a, a contracted police force working with, by, and through the local Somali government, a police force to cut off the pirates' logistics so they couldn't pay feed and resupply their guards and the problem went away so it wasn't a hit squad no okay no No. in fact it really wasn't that kinetic at all yeah they were armed i mean logistically it was hard the first mission they had to do was 500 kilometers one way on roads that hadn't been graded or improved in 30 years so it was um it was those kind of challenges to solve and it was it was really south african guys some ex uh, executive outcomes team that came and did it and they built the police force and it worked there's a um there's a documentary that was shot through the process called the somalia project that answers that question 
It's on YouTube, and it's free. <laughs> All right. And it actually won an award at the Toronto Film Festival. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, because again, check it out. knowing it would be controversial, knowing that the clowns at the State Department and the Obama administration did everything they could to block a program like that, because it's not something they directly controlled, it's, it's, it is such a mess. It is such a fetid swamp. Trump was right to call it a swamp. It is. Going back just a little bit, so you moving to Abu Dhabi, did that not, that didn't have anything to do with the politics, the, with the uh, political system smearing your name in the, in the public? Was and, I sick of the Washington nonsense? Sure. Yeah. But I, I, I came and went to the United States. It's not like I fled. I didn't go to exile. I had, I had some kids that still lived in the States, so I'd come back every few weeks to see them. Okay. Yeah. I was coming and going all over the world for, for those three years. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.